Greetings and welcome to the Wealth Management RPA Fast Chat. My name is Fred Marstein, contributing editor for Wealth Management Management's RPA Edge Omnichannel and CEO at Trow TPSU and 401k TV. Today we are talking with Rob Barnett, Wilmington Trust Head of Retirement Services. Rob, thanks for joining today. Thank you for the time, Fred. So a couple of questions. It feels like overnight CITs have proliferated the retirement plan advisor sold DC market. So what can you attribute this uh, seemingly sudden surge? Well, Fred, that's a great question. While it may seem like it's been overnight, I can say that when I started in this industry in 2000, it, CITs were available to retirement plans, but it's taken a, a long period of time to bring them up to where they are today. Some of the some of the items that have occurred since that time are that CITs became available to trade on the NSCC. That happened in about 2001. That made it easier for CITs to fall in line with trading like mutual funds. So that was a big deal. There has been a couple of key pieces of legislation, 404A5 and 48B2, that have allowed for CITs be, to become more mainstream as, as people look for lower cost investments or the most efficient vehicle for their retirement plan. Then lastly, you know, it's just been access to the right managers in this space. A lot of managers didn't have CITs available for the market. And as we've been able to bring some of those CI, some of those managers to, to the market with their, you know, with their top performing funds or their funds that are most used by uh, retirement plans, we've been able to really see that increase in growth in CITs over that period of time. So I think it's a number of contributing factors, Fred, but some of it's just time and getting things in line with, uh, so the vehicle could be competitive with other vehicles used inside retirement plans. And CITs were very popular to the larger market and not so much because it was too expensive for the smaller on a plan by plan basis, but you were able to leverage the actual entire book of, a, of an advisor or a group of advisors. Wasn't that a big factor as well? That is a big factor, Fred. And really, I think, you know, those bigger plans, those mega plans that you're talking about, they have teams of people that handle their benefits. So they could sort through the available universe, their consultants could take time to sort through that available universe. As we brought this down to the RPA groups, right, the aggregators, your bigger wire houses, you know, your bigger independents, and even down into, you know, some of the, the smaller advisor firms, it's really been that ease of access to information and ease of use of the CITs that has allowed for the growth of the product over time. Right. And as you said, with costs, not just with the, you know, uh, the efficiencies, but also, you know, negotiating, you know, sometimes with the active managers. So what are the benefits of CITs other, uh, over other vehicles like mutual funds? Well, Fred, a lot of people think that CITs are a lower cost vehicle because of the a lack of um, or less uh, governance. And that's just, we don't believe that to be true. And last year, we actually published a white paper with a prominent law firm kind of outlining what good governance is and how what all of the governance is inside of CITs. So the interesting thing is, is that governance isn't really paid for by the funds. It's paid for by the trustees. And that's a big difference between mutual funds because those expenses are passed through as other expenses here. That governance is paid for by the trustee and that helps to, mi to mitigate some of the expenses. Some of the other items are, you know, we don't have to file a prospectus and a prospectus is built based off of eligible investor. So that means that the, 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 an individual with you know a minimum amount of money can invest in that mutual fund so that prospectus has to be available to them to that individual and so there's a lot of expense that goes into sharing that information back and forth as to where here our funds are only available to qualified retirement plans and are you know th and those plans have advisors and they have a an investment committee so those people are the ones doing the vetting of the investment so that the individual can actually enter to the fund so the, some of the differences are really just different types of markets. Well, mutual funds do take qualified retirement plans. We're exclusive to qualified retirement plans. Both trade through the NSCC, you know, both have high levels of governance. 
but really in the CIT space, it's our ease of use and our ability to create new share classes, to your point earlier, that allow us to uh, really provide that, that, fee, that fee differential that is attractive to retirement plans and their, um, and their underlying investors. And I know it's uh, the CIT market share is growing rapidly, especially in the target date space. So um, I know you've spent a lot of, um, of time and money uh, and resources on technology. Um, what is that doing to help the RPAs and their clients? That's a great question, Fred, and I really appreciate you asking it. So our venture into technology just isn't stuff that we're doing, but it's really working with other partners. So this starts back in 2015 when we moved our, our fact sheet production to Morningstar. And you know, we're leveraging Morningstar's technology, Morningstar's platform for our fact sheets. And that was something that we we really pushed into to try to level set the playing field for CITs. Then in 2019, September 2019, with the NASDAQ, we pioneered ticker symbols for CITs. And there's a big deal there, right? Technology, so ease of access of information. And then our most recent venture is into our, our onboarding platform. So CITs have fallen behind in terms of digitizing onboarding. And so you know, we're very arcane. We take paper copies and some people go, well, we take um, PDFs. PDFs are not, um, PDFs is, is, is not a digital platform, right? It's, it's not what it is. So um, we've moved to a completely digital platform called Boarding Pass that allows for a shopping experience that's similar to Amazon, uh, similar to those major use platforms. So when a RPA, when their plan sponsor log in, to initiate an investment or, you know, to open an account inside of our CITs, um, they're getting a shopping experience that's similar to what they're seeing today, something they have something they may have used before, it looks like something they've used before. So we're going to continue to invest in technology and continue to try to make CITs more mainstream for retirement plans, because the one thing you can't bet on is performance, right? The one thing that you can bet on is expense. And we're here to help participants save more one thing we can do is help them with a lower cost investment. Great. Well, that's all the time we have today. I've been talking with Rob Barnett, Wilmington Trust Head of Retirement Services. Thanks for joining us today, Rob. Thank you for the time, Fred. Really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and your audience. Have a great day. Thank uh, and thanks for watching Wealth Management's RPA Bash Chat.